I'm not an expert, if I think about my friends, 25%? It's a guess, it's a guess. I wish I made one. I've lived in China for a long time, and I'm married as well. It was not something that we ever did ourselves, but I think it's becoming more common in Australia. It's not something I would do, but I suppose it, it does exist. Some couples, they decide to sign this, this kind of contract, but it's not really common. Not in my culture unless there's a lot of money involved. If there's a lot of money, then there's a lot of at stake, right? But usually if it's not that much money involved, no. Breaking up in the West, where, especially in Sweden where I, I'm from, is very common. It gets tricky when you have an apartment and stuff, but yeah, you make it work out somehow. I wouldn't think so, but it might be something that parents would bring up as kind of advice, perhaps. And it kind of depends on case by case. I mean, of course, if the parents are uncertain about the match, they might bring that up as a way of expressing their uncertainty about it. No, that's personal. It's very seldom that your parents would be involved with your personal finance, especially if you're married or a couple. You don't even have to be married, you can just be sort of living together, signed up as living together, your economy together, but typically you wouldn't include your parents in any kind of discussion about this. You can discuss with your parents, but they are not a stakeholder whatsoever. It depends on the family, but usually not. The area where we are from, people are free to choose whom to marry, so no. I would say no. Oh no, I don't think so. By the time you're ready to marry, you don't talk to your parents about those things. Something that you own, something that you have title to. Sure, sure. The money I earn, everything what I have as a woman, it's mine. Everything what my husband earns, is ours. <laughs> <laughs> There's property that's your, that you own. Of course, when you're married, your property becomes combined. So that's part of being married. If you're a single person, your property belongs to you. Once you're married, it belongs to the family. It's an interesting question how far the family goes. Like, does that include parents, grandparents, and so on? In, uh, in Australia, it's usually just husband, wife, and then children means the family. So the property belongs to that family unit. Personal property is something that you own, that you take care of. Even pets can be per personal property, of course, if you take care of them and so on. Strong definitions are on paper with the government. You own a piece of land or cars. Maybe also if it, you have like some super valuable paintings or something at home, you might have some kind of certificate for that because, well, anything valuable like that you would have to be able to trace that kind of uh, property. So for super important property, yes, there's some kind of governance over that, but otherwise, no. In my own experience, I would say that it would possibly cause disputes. To me, personally, it seems a little bit pessimistic because it's kind of like saying before you're married, maybe this won't work out. I want to believe that once you're married, it's forever. In my personal feeling, you know, I'm, I'm lucky I have a wonderful wife and I plan to spend the rest of my life with her, so I don't think about what would happen if we broke up and who would get what. That, that doesn't cross in my mind. No, no, it's not necessary. It depends on what kind of relationship you have with a person. So. If it's a very good relationship, then you don't need to do that. Necessary, no. Useful if you have a lot of assets, for sure. I don't know, it depends on the family. It depends on people who are together. Avoid disputes if you separate, if you divorce, but it might cause disputes if you think about doing prenups when you're getting married. It might be a sensitive issue.